I'm glad we got to drink six milk six milkshake milkshakes. We're both gonna take a I'm lactate. I'm gonna go vomit and, <laughs> in the bathroom for a while. I'm gonna probably do more diarrhea than I've ever done. <laughs> Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Y'all a brewheads? Yeah, we brewheads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 95. 95? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I've been in the podcast, and this afternoon, I wouldn't say this evening, but it's afternoon. this afternoon, we're here in an island off the island, Il Perot. We're technically have, not even in Montreal. We're not even in Montreal. We're in the middle of the idyllic uh, pastures <laughs> of this island. you like that? Yeah. Good, good. Good, good description, yeah. eh? Uh, I have Noah Forrest from Beerism here for the second time. What is so, up? How you doing? What the fuck happened to your fingers? Fell off a ladder. Oh, yeah, you did. We'll talk about that in a second. You okay? Yeah, yeah no, I'm good. I'm you good. just mashed stuff up a little bit. Yeah, a little scratch, bruise. Jesus Christ, this fucking yeah. guy. Okay. So, between ladders. you got to be careful, right? You're getting too old for this. Right. Um, so, funnily enough, we just realized we're actually going to do a short video. Uh, we'll talk about why in a second. And then we, Noah suggested we do a podcast. And then we realized this is episode 95. You were last here on episode 55. Damn. And... Just check Facebook memories. One year ago today, today. we filmed the other one that you which were on. we did uh, an Aseki Nicho vertical. Yes, which is my first ever vertical, and now that we're doing. I know, right? So this is like now we're doing horizontal, meant to be. and now we're doing a horizontal of the finest <laughs> style of beers available on the market right now. You want to tell them what we're doing? Apparently, we're drinking milkshake IPAs, and I don't know how you con me into doing this. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I feel like my mouth can't get any higher. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is amazing. So to give it a bit of context, we have a, uh, as most beer nerds do, a bit of a group chat with uh, Chris from Hobson Bros, Max from Hobson Bros, uh, Nate uh, from Nathan Does Beer. And um, we have a running joke about essentially milkshake IPAs and lactose in beer. Uh, I am heavily team lactose. I am not. Yes. So Chris is not... Max is on the fence. Scott also claims to be on the fence, so I didn't wow, invite him to really the group chat. Really, like perfectly done. And, Nate, and Nate's team lactose. Yeah. So we, we were supposed to do this in Ottawa, um, and I guess it kind of worked out how it was supposed to because we were going to do like a short video. I thought we'd yeah. do like a versus thing where we we're going to do like one bottle of something, maybe. Yeah, or two. just argue and stuff and be funny about yeah. it. But now we actually sort of over the last few weeks we kind of collated these beers and they just kind of worked out. Um, so basically, I'm terrified. Gonna, yeah, you should be. Did you take your lactate? You're going to need it. <laughs> Several pills. <laughs> Several and that's just, why we have cheese here, too. Just, just, to, just, to, just in case we need really, a bit more lactose. Yeah. We should have some heavy cream. We have our, uh, our milkshake straws. Which are it's lovely. in our gorgeous crystal uh, beer glasses. So, I mean, like, you know, we're, we have everything we need. Um, so, let's just run down what we're going to be drinking uh, today whilst we, I guess, uh, heartily argue and debate yes. over the virtues and otherwise of these uh, beers. So the first one uh, was something you actually pointed out to me. This is Tapir, uh, a milkshake IPA with cherries from Lagabier, brewed especially for Peluso. Yeah. That I found out they got because the exclusive. The exclusive. They yeah. actually paid for the batch. That's what someone. Okay, called. so it's the, it's Peluso's beer essentially. Uh, yeah. Essentially, and they've done it with a few other breweries as well. Yeah, they did one with the Pit Caribou too recently. That was what it was. Uh, second one is the Vruden Mango Milkshake IPA. And to be fair, you haven't had any of these, correct? Or you have I had, had this. the collective arts, and you've one. had the, uh, this. Next yes, one. Okay. that's right. I've had everything except the last one, so it's going to be good to like come run them all because they're all very different beers. Yeah, and which just, is a good thing for doing. Uh, something it'd be boring like this. if they're all the same, yeah. right? And plus, you get palate fatigue quick time. Exactly. Tell us about this one. So that's from uh, that's uh, Los Taber uh, Tabernacos from uh, Brasserie du Bas Canada, which I'm sporting a lovely T-shirt representing. I love they it. They gave me this t-shirt yesterday along with that can and their uh, latest uh, New England... Hyper. Hyper, Hyper 4? 5. Or oh, 5. Yeah. Yeah, honestly. So that was very kind of them. Appreciate that. They're out of control. This guy. Collective Arts Liquid Fest, Liquid Art Fest IPA. This was the beer specifically made for the festival. Yeah. Um, I've had is, that one. You have this one you have had. And that one. Okay. So this is a, a highly debated one online. People either really love it yeah, or they I saw some serious anger towards it on I one of your posts. Yes. He's a, I, he's a friend. He's a good guy. Um, mm -hmm. He said he, he hates this beer. And I like He justified why he hates it. So yeah. the, And he says it and he asks Collective Arts. And I think it's completely reasonable why he doesn't like it. I think it falls into care. that category of... <clears throat> um, Potentially too much juice and not enough beer. That's exactly what. Um, is. And so I don't think it had anything to do with the fact that it was a milkshake IPA. It was more the juice thing. I've heard people say that about 
um, Lega beers, fruited ones oh, too. Yeah. Because like the, I remember the passion fruit one, which I quite like. I love it. But at the same time, I get it because it's like you know New England IPAs and, and and the way that some beers go with these extremes and adjuncts, they can transform the beer into something that almost doesn't taste like beer. But this almost yeah. brings it to a new level where like if you served it to somebody who wasn't a beer geek, they probably wouldn't even realize they were no. drinking beer. So like when you get to that point, I guess it you know be a criticism. Much can be valid in that sense yeah I, I don't know I, I don't necessarily agree with that but yeah. I mean we'll, we'll, we'll talk about yeah, it and exactly. th- this is actually the caveat for the or, or the uh, what's the word why we're doing this it's the, the whole reason the why holy we're doing grail of, of, of Canadian milkshake IPAs absolutely uh, Bellwood the latest milkshake the Neapolitan one which is probably the most uh, interesting one to date arguably yeah or, or, or you know the probably the elite. one that's jumping the biggest shark Hey! Wow, the puns yeah. are beginning. Um, so I know this. This was why uh, you know this was just something we were supposed to drink together. And then we're like, then here we are. With this. What's crazy about that beer is like I I have friends in and around Toronto. I have a good friend Derek that will go to Bellwoods often, bring me back stuff. So I've had almost everything that they've done that was rare. Maybe not lately because they're pumping out just an obscene amount of barrel so much, craziness yeah. and whatever. <clears throat> it's a lot. But um, I've never had a milk shark, so this will be my first Ever. milk shark. It's because, an interesting one to start with. Which is crazy because they, 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 they release all these amazing beers with low bottle counts, but you can generally get your hands on it. But these milkshake IPAs, milkshake IPAs, you can't even get. <laughs> it's like lined up. They I could, they could be like this. bringing in Lambic or something mm. and they would probably get a bottle of milkshake IPAs. Yeah. Impossible. And I have to send people madness. or I happen to be there for it. And it was a line and I was on time. No, maybe five minutes after they opened and the line was like sort of moving and apparently in Ossington it was down the street. <laughs> Every time. For lactose. For lactose, bro. I'm telling you. Hashtag team lactose yeah. all day. And this one, this was like a, what is that? Some semen there. This is a late addition to the uh, squad. Huge shouts to Stephanie and Max out in uh, Michigan. Um, this is from Batch Brewing Co. in Detroit. This is their first ever can beer. Um, it's rainbow colors. Oh, they don't blended. can anything. They don't can anything. So they decided to go with the milkshake IPA as their first can? And it's not even, it's a one-off for the can. Wow. Like it's not even it's one of their wrong with them. I know, right? Um... <laughs> Nothing, maybe. And interesting, you said this is um, a mango, <coughs> mango and passion fruit, and it's a double one. So we're going to finish on this one because it's eight point nine percent. So hopefully, it's not too warm. Mango and passion it. fruit. Yeah, which is interesting. So, so does this have mango in it too? Do we have yes. three mango beers? Three mango beers. This is cherry. cherry. It's chocolate, strawberry, vanilla, and, and nothing. Just vanilla, right? Oh, or no, there might be fruit in this too. Is there fruit in that? And we're talking about the Los Tabernacles. Yes. Yes. For those, I keep forgetting that not everyone watches the video. <laughs> yeah. And I've been listening to a lot of your podcasts, so I'm trying to keep that. Trying to keep that, yeah. Because sometimes that happens. I like that. Look at that head on that. I, that was an act. I poured it like I know how to pour beer. I don't know why I did that. So you oh haven't. Oh, no, look, it's doing it to me too. This shit is like the straw. It almost looks spicy. Like look at this. It's like I know, right? You did it on purpose, right? To to make it to make shaky. it. I, I wanted you yeah. to have the experience. I don't know. Fuck. What's this? <laughs> Gosh, all good. It'll come in there. So, let's um, just before we mm-hmm. did you drink it with the straw? I'm gonna drink it with the straw. I'm gonna oh, drink yeah, it with the straw. Too. Yeah. Did you do it? No, not yet. Let's do it. Drink it I'm straw. cheers. Yeah, right. Get, yeah. Get in trouble. Exactly. Cheers. Get in. Yeah. All right. Do the straw. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's a weird experience. I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> it's like I've forgotten how to drink out of a straw. It's like going <laughs> yeah, no, it's like <laughs> how do you do this? I'm not a straw expert. So this this is an interesting one. So just before we even like break down this beer. Okay. Let's talk just like you were telling me earlier. You have one, we're going to go through some of the history of where the milkshake IPA originated. Yeah, and so if if anyone cr- uh, wants, correct me because I read a one short article. <laughs> I'm not a, so a Noah expert. is the expert. Basically, yes, no? you are the milkshake I, IPA expert. I went to Bruin College and studied <laughs> lactose in IPA specifically. No, um, so I, it seems that it originates with tired hands. They weren't the first. Where are they from? Uh, is, it, is it Virginia or something? I don't even remember. You know what? You keep talking about They're northeast, though. Aren't yeah, they're they? northeast. Yeah, they're up yeah. this way. Um, so, they're not the first people to put lactose in an IPA. Um, was it Omnipolo or something? No, the first milkshake IPA they did with Omnipolo. Um, uh, but it was. Um, God, I can't remember the name. That they happens. do uh, Dark Lord. Oh, um, Three Floyds. Three Floyds did it once, apparently like five or six years before. Okay. Um, but it. It didn't really take off. I think it was like 
well enough received, but it wasn't like it didn't become a thing. Whereas right, in, when right. Tired Ends did it, it just became a thing. And apparently, so they were they've been they were brewing like the New England style for a while, <laughs> hazy IPAs. Like they're one of the first, from what I understand. Uh, and one of the guys from Beer Advocate, one of the brothers there, mm-hmm. went and gave, like, basically trashed their one of their their New England style pale ales, okay. and called it a milkshake IPA. And apparently, I didn't know this, but at the time, mm. like when the New England thing, you know, the the real hazy sludgy stuff was coming out, people would use it as like a negative term, like all these damn milkshake beers, all this garbage milkshake beers. So. It was almost the creation of milkshake IPA was almost a response to like that criticism, though, yeah. uh, specifically from the guy from Beer Advocate. That's so crazy. the brewmaster at Tired Hands basically um, was like, "Okay, fine. You want to call it a milkshake IPA?" Yeah. And so he brewed this. I don't know if 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 he necessarily brewed it as a result of um, the criticism, but he definitely named it as a result of the criticism. Apparently, Interesting. so he created a beer that had lactose, vanilla. I think apple pure, uh, apple puree, or apple pectin, apple pectin, or something like so that. So it could be. I think. I think it's a derivative of the puree. Yeah, so maybe. it could have actually just chucked the puree in there. He might have done both to kind of create this IPA that's as thick as I can only imagine. Right. Um, and then that's kind of how it was born. And then it, it's over the last couple of years, I guess, it started to become a thing, like a whole thing. So lactose had been used in beer, though. Oh yeah, and then you know. I, I, I read, read a little bit about the history of lactose in beer to begin with, and I don't know 100%, I don't remember all of it, but, but it I think it was popularized as a result of pregnant women, actually. So I don't know if you've ever heard that, no, you know, no. like, there was this idea that Guinness or stouts in general were good for women when they're pregnant. Right. I've heard of that in, like, countries like Jamaica and Jamaica's stuff specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at one point, I don't know if... Someone started doing it to market to pregnant women by putting lactose in stouts, or if someone put lactose in stouts and then they realized, hey, we can market this as some a health benefit for pregnant women. So right. the idea was that stouts were literally <clears throat> good for women that were pregnant because I don't know, some kind of whatever was in them or something like right. that. Um, so that was interesting. But then for for I, the better part of how, whenever that was for decades, I don't know, a century or however long it was, um, it's pretty much only exclusively been used in stouts. Okay. I, I think it, until recently, I never heard it being used in, in any other else. beer styles. Yeah. But I mean, until recently, there weren't that, that many, many beer, beer styles. I mean, or at least like they were, there were, and then they went away and now they're back. But so, yeah. And uh, you're a big fan of, um, of lactose in almost anything, it seems. Yes. Um, whereas in, I, I can... I, I don't mind it in big stouts, but I've never really been a milk stout fan, um, largely because I like my beers dry and not mm-hmm. sweet. Fair. I find this milkshake craze odd. Uh, I don't. I don't. It the is thing odd. is, I don't love the. I, the problem is, I just don't. I don't think I like the taste of lactose. It's not the idea hmm. that I'm against. It's like. I take I take a sip of the beer and I'm like, oh okay, I dig this component or I dig that component or like maybe it's not great because of this or that, and then I get this <clears> like, <throat> it's almost like a chalky, powdered sugar that's kind of become stale. Yeah, you said taste. stale icing sugar. I, that, yeah, that, that's that what I get like sometimes. Okay, and and I think I was talking to a friend recently and he was he was saying it's like it seems to be with lactose it's like, it works it works it works it works and then it fails like it's right. like, you you can. You can kind of just put just enough that it gives that body a little bit of sweetness. You balance it with something else, but then right when it gets too much, then it just it's just too too. Much. It's over the top. Yeah. Um, well, that's a great point. So let, let's let's like dissect this bad boy. So this is the cherry uh, one from Lager Beer. Um, this is the least uh, opaque yeah. um, milkshake IPA potentially I've ever had, personally. Can you smell it's, lactose? Because I don't even think I know what the lactose tastes like, if I'm going to be honest with you. I taste it in here, but it's not abrasive. It it kind of tastes like candy to me. This beer? Or no, beer? lactose in general. It gives it this, like, candy finish. Huh. Um, that's the only thing. I, and I think that's why I think the icing sugar thing, like, candy that's been sitting around a lot, like, as a kid, eating it, um, hmm. that that's the flavor I that's get from that. lactose. So for me, it's not even necessarily the sweetness, because that's part of why the reason why I don't love lactose, but it's also that particular flavor. 
Because right. as you know, I love barley wines. I love imperial stouts. Not to say that they're always sweet, but I even a love. Lot of them I, are sweet. I mean, I love pretty much every beer style, like done right or whatever. Right. Um, I'm big into quads. I mean, less so these days, but like a lot of people are done with all those beer styles. But I'm still into them, so I'm not adverse to sweetness. It's just there's something about lactose, and when it's not used particularly well, that I don't love. Hmm. Okay. So what do you? Uh, what well, do I, yeah, well, like I mean, beer, like, like uh, in this beer, this to me it has the creamy body, which is almost like I always refer That's to nice. as like the crystal Pepsi effect. Right. Where like, and if you ever had the Bose Tom Green milk stout, the blonde one, right? I haven't had it, but I, I, I I've had, had white stout? stout or blonde stout. Sorry, yeah. So you know the point, right? Like, it, it, you close your eyes, and everything about it is a brown chocolatey stout, and then you open, and you're like, what the fuck is this? I guess for me though, I haven't. Had, maybe I haven't had one that that was. That, that that actually gave me that to me. They I, I haven't really disliked them, but I find they just taste like blonde beers with coffee in them. Fair. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Because you don't you don't get that 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 roastiness. It's more of like coffee infused lighter beers. Hmm. But I haven't had okay. that many. I'd like to see what you think two. of that one. Because to be yeah. honest, I think that was the first one I've ever had. And I don't. I, I did a video on it. I don't think I remember closing my eyes it and doing it. It became. But... It didn't become a big thing here only a few breweries in Quebec have done it and yep. even in Ontario I haven't seen a bunch that was one of the only ones I think it's probably bigger in the states like milkshake IPAs definitely blew up more than blonde you know, stats that's for sure yeah a little bit more a little bit more which I think has to do but, with the hops oh for sure well I mean like so this this is like I, I would have liked a bit more body like it's still creamy enough it's mm-hmm. not tripping me out that it has this, this level I would have liked a little more body in this one and maybe a little bit more like more everything. Yeah, like I feel like the it's cher- a little dialed I, back. More too cherry. much cherry can be a problem sometimes, but there's there's some hops here, but it's not yeah. it's not intense. The cherry is pretty subtle. Um, I, I definitely right. taste like the lactose. Yeah, um, there's a, I, I'm st- now you said the powdered sugar, the powdering acid sugar. I can really like I'm looking for that. And there's like a yeah. stickiness in the mouthfeel that I'm not always a huge fan of. Either. Is that with everything or this one specifically? Oh, with with milkshake IPAs. I find I get it. Uh, the less in ones like Los Tabernacos. Right. Um, because I feel like that beer, when I, I had it mm-hmm. once, so we'll see again, but that beer was very much like a crazy bright New England IPA that had a little bit of vanilla and lactose in it. Right. And that's, that's the way I tend to like them the most. Okay, I get that. But, um, but again, I, I you've had way more fire milkshakes than I have. I've been only drinking the ones that they brew in Quebec and we're new to it and we've like we're not always on top of the hot game in the same way as the Americans yeah. and stuff like that so it's possible I haven't had like the, the quintessential well, I've definitely not had the quintessential milkshake IPA like, like tired something hands, from Tired Hands no, or but aren't there other ones you've had like Vermont stuff maybe uh, do you know the funny thing I don't think many Vermont uh, breweries yeah, do milkshake so. IPAs. All the ones I've had are all Trillium Treehouse and then a bunch of the Massachusetts like Lamplighter and uh, Night Shift and blah blah blah. Trillium's um, starting to do lactose stuff too. I haven't, I haven't seen any. Recently I really, think yeah. they're starting. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I would definitely would like to get my hands on some. I've had a bunch from Vancouver. Um, Twin Sail. Oh, dude, I've never had Twin Sails ones. What have my boys sent me? Really? I've definitely had some. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I never got the twin sales. It just didn't work out. I wasn't doing a trade when they dropped it. I've been dropping them all lately, and I'm not trading right now. So. When I say milkshake IBA, I guess I'm kind of also counting any kind of pale lactose beer. ale that has lactose. In oh, it. word. Okay. Or any hoppy beer that has lactose. Because I mean, isn't isn't the only oh, thing that makes one. a milkshake IPA milkshake IPA basically lactose and vanilla? Yes. Okay. So that's a really good point. I did a trade with a dude here the other day and I got some beers from a brewery called Garrison City in New Hampshire. Okay. Haven't heard of them. Gave me three beers. Uh, one of them was a lactose. and IP- no, It was an IPA with lactose and kiwi and hibiscus. That's interesting. Right? And it wasn't a milkshake IPA. It was an IPA with lactose. But in all, for all intents, but it didn't have vanilla. I don't think. I so think I, it's. I think I what think I'm seeing. Um, the only reason I said that it has to be vanilla and lactose is because every time I see a milkshake IPA that has vanilla and lactose, they call it a milkshake IPA. Yes. Any other time, you see like a hoppy beer that has lactose, it just says a New England IPA with lactose and strawberries. They don't name right. it that. So. 
I think it's kind of silly. It's like, why does the vanilla have to make it the milkshake? Like, why not? Why don't we say any hoppy beer with lactose should be a milkshake IPA? I don't know. Or get even more specific, and it's got to have pectin, and it's got to have this, and it's got to like have a specific bunch of rules. Mm. Because otherwise, you're just like, okay, I have to what read is this that? whole thing. Oh, it's a IPA with strawberries and lactose and coconut nibs, but because there's no vanilla, we're not calling it a milkshake IPA. I mean, like, I feel like that's. I was talking to someone about this uh, the other day, but about like the the, the boxing in of styles mm -hmm. and labeling. Um, I like that there is that freedom that you can call it because some people don't like that. I think it's kind of cool. You can call it anything. Right. Like, we can, the one I was saying with the lactose and the kiwi and stuff, it's like, well, for all in. It's, it's pretty much a lactose. I mean, I'm sorry, milkshake IPA, right? Exactly. For all intents and purposes, if you put it in this lineup and you didn't know, you'd be like, you just think it was. Or even um, it could you just call it a milkshake pale ale or a milkshake hoppy ale. But I like, I think throwing lactose into something um, hoppy, you, you should call it a milkshake something. But right. That's just me. I, I think that's a, I'm with it. I'm, I'm not with against it. that. Um, we we'll got the next one. Babe, is it possible if we could put these other beers just in the cooler just so they don't get messed up? Yeah. I know it's kind of annoying and I'm going to have to keep interrupting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so we, we did a video the other day, um, if anyone didn't uh, see it, um, and we were talking about um, uh, bringing craft beer to parties and then people taking the beer out of the fridge and stuff and like right. when they think it's a BYOB. I don't know if they can still hear me. And someone was saying, um, well, Noah and I were talking about it, and Noah was telling me about bringing the cooler. Yeah. And so ever since then, I was like, "Hey, that's a good idea." I've got a, a shitty like bag. It's like a cooler bag, but it says it's like a thank you. It's like a Heineken branded bag, so it's a little embarrassing uh, as a craft beer nerd to be bringing around this Heineken bag. You okay with not rinsing? Nah, it's fine. Some people don't like that we don't rinse, um, and I've been trying to rinse a little more. Um, so you know, let's, let's, again. let's not take beer so seriously, right? You know what? I agree. Everyone needs to uh, oh, back okay. the truck up. Like when I'm when I'm writing about beer, not that I really have back-to-back -back beers when I'm writing, but I probably would, right? But because you also you're luxury, reviewing, like really big beers, though. Well, and and not only that, I have the luxury of being near a sink. I'm not I'm not in front of a camera. Right? Oh, that's like, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't. I think the reason why you don't rinse isn't because you don't believe in it. It's because like, what are we going to run off camera every time? It's just like well, it's too much. That was exactly it. We should tr always start with the straw. I actually I was thinking that too. Okay, cheers. so this, cheers. Uh, Rudin Mango Milkshake IPA. Rudin Mango Milkshake. That is looking IPA. like murky. Yeah, it almost looks oxidized, but we'll see. It does, doesn't it? Oh, it's not that. that old. It's it's almost six weeks or five weeks, but that's not crazy for a milkshake IPA with food mm. in it. Um, what is in this? I don't know if there's oxidized. Vanilla. I don't think there's any lactose. But they call it a milkshake. Hops, Did you lie mango, to me? Hops, mango, vanilla. Okay, vanilla. There you go. Oh, there's no lactose? No, yeah. there has to be. It kind of tastes like there is. Well, maybe they're just smart, and they're like, we're not going to put that in there. We're not <laughs> going to put that trash wow. in our beer. I'm genuinely offended. What do you think, babe? What do you think? It's okay. Mm. Noah, Noah Forrest, what do you think? I don't really like it. I'm sorry. I'm not that huge on this one. I don't know what happened. Yo, I, I've had it this before, and I liked it. Um, five and a half weeks old. The depth could have been keeping it on a warm Yo, I got shelf. this. I'm gonna be real. I got it from Palooza. Oh right, like you take like last stuff. week, and I I bought my first one from there as well. This definitely, to be honest, I can't. I have to look at the photo. I don't remember if this is what it looks like. It definitely has that like oxidized look. It also tastes like it has lactose in it. Hundred percent. To me, drinking from straws is fun. Yeah, um, big time. I, I think I preferred the previous one. This mm. one. See, like, I'm not getting much of the mango. I'm not getting. I, I it's feel also like tough I... with these beers. They can fall off, or something can go wrong. And we've looked at. I'm not saying that. Like, Fruden's. I should have looked at the date. That was my fault. Talented brewery. Yeah, They're Fruden brewing great. insanely good German style beers. Like yeah. their Pilsner. Oh yeah, I wrote an article yeah. on them. They sent me a, a box and I, everything that I had. I was in love with. Mm. It was also just like such a nice change to everything else, right? Like these. Right. these like people aren't interested in, or sorry, not every, a lot of people aren't interested in German styles, right? Everyone wants IPAs, everyone wants the crazy shit. Um, there's something about an amazing Pilsner or a Hell's Lager or something like that, um, and they they kill it better right. than 
than anyone in this province. But it, but I also found it interesting that like you have this brewery who's, who's nailing these very traditional styles, and instead of getting their feet wet with like, I don't know, let's try a, a stout or we'll do uh, an American IPA. I think they might have been done an American IPA, but it's like. Just jump into mango milkshake idea. It's like, <laughs> is, you, is it like a little strange? Well, it just seems like a, a like a, a too much of a left, a left turn, turn yeah. big time. Yeah, like it's not like uh, Bellwoods where it was like a a transition or a lager beer. Or it only makes sense. I'm almost surprised that this is the first milkshake they've done. Yeah, given they've done all these insane like fruited IPAs and stuff like that's a and they're kind of borderline. They were more man- they were in my mind and based on what we were saying before, those other lager beer joints are much more along the milkshake style. Oh, for with sure. The heavy fruit. It's just without the lactose and the vanilla. Yeah. That's all they really need to add. Yeah. So for- that's that's kind of a thing. If there's any brewers or anyone watching or listening that has an opinion on that, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear if you guys would agree with the fact that if it's like if the if there's a key ingredient that makes it a milkshake IPA or key ingredients like potentially like you said vanilla maybe the pectin or the apple pectin or something yeah because that's the I, body because I feel like the body is key I and feel these, like no these one two here don't is really doing have the body. that and we'll see when we hit the uh, that's why I'm really curious about milk shark because I fe- I don't feel like I've had a for lack of a better term like a proper milkshake IPA when I'm reading about like how thick and sludgy these things are supposed to be yep. Um, off, all the off. ones I've had, like, might have I might not have liked them because they had a little bit too much lactose or whatever. But I've ne- I don't feel like I've ever had one where it's like it's as thick as it seems like they're supposed, supposed to, to be. actually be. And I, I heard that yeah. like the milk sharks were pretty like they tick. Oh yeah, they fuck around. Personally, I don't think it's gonna last. I mean, maybe using lactose in IPAs will remain, but I feel like it's gonna maybe stay a bit more niche. And not necessarily um, keep going because now it's like maple buttercup pancakes IPA, Ooh, right? Yeah, and, and like I get that it's fun, and I like the fun side of it, but yeah. at the same time, it can get a little eye rolling. You know what I mean? Like, do we need to keep doing? The, is it is it necessary? Like, I don't know. But I'm also torn because I, I like the innovation. I like the idea. Yeah. I like the idea, and I hate I hate haters. But then I catch myself doing a little hating. I, I don't know if I feel it's hating. I think you're just more of a traditional beer drinker because you've been doing it at a heavier so. level. Like you've been I mean, doing. I, I don't. I don't like saying that either because it's like, not heavy is not the right word. But you're like a more like, you, like you don't look at your cellar. The amount of the type of beers like, like I like more things than you thought I do. To be honest, and I actually agree with everything you said, with the exception that it's going to last. I this think, is growing on me a bit. Yes, yeah, I was actually going to say it's actually getting better. I still think it's not as I actually quite enjoyed it the first time, so I don't think this is. Uh, it's elevated. it's not as fresh as it could be, mm. and maybe like I think sometimes milkshake IPAs you can probably say they can a they drop longer, quick, eh? or sometimes they drop like, all the fruited ones. Oh, really, Bellwoods too. Two weeks, three weeks. Don't so, we're we're getting this at a good time. Any late, so I was like, we have to do this like soon. I'm glad you um, came out to my humble abode in the uh, the island. Listen. Can you hear that, guys? You actually can. It's the chirping of the birds. And, and you can hear my summer. pool motor Listen. going. Mm. <laughs> we should be drinking this. We should be doing this topless in the pool, just you with straws from should. the bottle. Um, what were you saying? You made some good points. So I want to... Uh, you like that idea? Yeah, great idea. Uh, the Tiffany, just to prove that for the next one, for the, maybe the IGTV. Mm, Ooh, that's not a bad... Yeah, we're doing an yeah, IGTV beer. And yeah. we can just put two straws in one bottle. Come in too. Yeah, yeah, I'm down for go. that. Um, so to, to go into what you're saying, mm-hmm. I agree 100% that everything went way too far. It was like the hop explosion where the palate wrecking, everyone was like, punch me in the face with hops, and then like the million percent stouts and all this crazy shit, and then it came back down. And then the with the in that realm, right. then there's these new styles that came back, roller coaster, right? right? With the milkshakes and lactose and New England and everything's hazy, and then maybe even you could probably throw in that um, like dry hopped pilsners and lagers and stuff. Like right. everything is just... a, a slight variations on, on different things that are to making it interesting and I do see it coming back down again I don't see it going away but I think it, no I don't I think see it it's, relaxing I, I think a lot of like a lot of people who have similar points of view as me like to say like it's just a trend it's gonna go away I don't I, I don't think it's gonna go away I think it's gonna find itself It'll a just place a nice niche. but it's not gonna be we're not going to see every brewery releasing a milkshake IPA like no. they are now in a couple of years. No. Whereas in, I think, New England IPAs aren't going anywhere yep. ever. I Maybe agree. it'll stop becoming the one and the only lineup thing. Yeah. yeah. 
but they're not going anywhere. They're just too damn good. No, they're fantastic. Exactly. Um, but there's a, there's a nice balance, and I think that's like kind of like almost anything in any industry in the world. Like there's a balance of uh, where it needs to be, and with milkshakes and with all these like hyped up trendy styles, that they went too far. Yeah, like it got way too hyped, and everything got kind of like just over the top. Like why do you have to line up to get a lactose beer? It's stupid. But eventually it'll come back down. But I, I, I can see these like they have a place, and they're interesting. One eternity later. So look, let's wrap it up here. Yep. Uh, Noah, I'm where can everyone done. find you online? Oh, we need to take a photo. We have to get another beer now. Yeah. With a fucking straw in it. Oh, I'm sorry, you told me that ahead of time. What if I just throw a bunch of cheese in my glass and shove a straw into that? <laughs> Tiff, Tiff not in the head. The producer's saying no. You have to put orange juice. Oh, right. uh, where can everyone find you online, Noah first? Um, beerism.ca or on Facebook. Beerism and on... Uh, Instagram. Instagram, I think it's beerism. Beerism.ca .ca written out. And on Twitter, it's beerism1. Why? Who took beerism and who we have to fight? Yeah, seriously. We have I, to fight I don't them? remember. I don't really it, use Do you know what? Twitter. I bet it was you and you fucking lost the password. <laughs> you dickhead. Wasn't it you? <laughs> that sounds like something I would do. But no, I think uh, people have thought of it before me. It's just I've only, I don't know, Branded perfected it. it. Yeah, Owned it. I like that, eh? I like that. I like that. Brother, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been Always a pleasure. a pleasure. I'm glad we got to drink six milkshakes. Six milkshakes. milkshakes. We're both going to take a lactate. I'm going to go vomit and... <laughs> in the bathroom for a while. I'm going to probably do more diarrhea than I've ever done. <laughs> I look forward to it. This is actually really good. <laughs> God, this was amazing, and I enjoyed uh, trying all these. And it was at fun. least, And just doing them side by side was a it was, great right? experience. I've yeah. never done anything like this before either, and it was cool just to see the difference in yep. what lactose can do to beer. You know whether you like it or not. It's very or whether interesting. the rude one even has lactose. In it yeah, we need to question. we need to talk to them because uh, they might not. You know what? I know there are other beers of five, but goddamn it, guys. Um, get got, your lactose shit together. Get your, <laughs> your lactose shit together. Um, that is it, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, smash the thumbs up, hit subscribe below, and hit the notification bell so you know ding when the new videos drop. Follow us on social media at BAOS Podcast. Check out the long form audio so you Do can that. hear and watch. Well, not really watch. I only listen to it. I don't even bother watching the videos because I can hear like the entire thing. <laughs> exactly. So you listen to the entire thing. Where do you listen to it? What's your uh, thing? I use iTunes because I have an iPhone. Perfect. So uh, I have a uh, two-hour commute every day, so I get to listen get to your face every week. I'm in Noah's ear. I'm in his it's, messenger. I'm in his. It's texts. a little aggressive, actually. <laughs> I'm. Uh, it's it's. I am, just a little too much. I am Noah right now. <laughs> um, I'm fathering none of them. Um, that is it, guys. Thank you for watching. Get some lactose in you. I'm drunk on lactose, literally. <laughs> literally, get it in you.